Welcome to the Energy Design Systems Load Calculator program. In this module, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to generate a report for purposes of the load, specifically for a contractor, because we also have a homeowner report. I will also walk you through that contractor report. Now, this is assuming you've completed your load. So in the previous module for data entry, we entered all this data to generate this load. It generated the graphs, it gave us these load numbers here on the screen, the pie charts, and all the data associated with that. But we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're gonna enter our customer's name. In this case, I'll enter my own name. We can go ahead and plug in the email address for the customer, as well as the phone number. I can then also select any associations that I have that I would like to have populated on the report. So you can pick from any of these or you can upload your own. And then from that at the bottom, you have the ability to email yourself the report, email it to a customer, download it so that you can print it to the screen or print it to a printer. And like I said, there's also a homeowner version of that report which we'll discuss in another module. But we're gonna select the contract report, we're gonna download it and we're gonna say get report. It takes a few seconds to go ahead and generate a PDF, which it will then download to your computer. And you can place that wherever you like. You can call the file whatever you like. As you can see, the file name is already assigned based on the address that you've given it. So we'll go ahead and download that. It takes about 10 seconds for that to populate and generate. We'll go ahead and open that PDF. We'll go ahead and shrink it a little bit here so we can see it on the screen. But as you can see, we have a load report dated today when the load was performed. We have the customer information over here. We have the company information. Again, in another module, you saw where you can upload in your account information your logo for your company. If not, you will get the Energy Design Systems logo on the report as well as on the screen. It then has our house conditions. And as you can see here, we've got all the information that we entered in the previous module where we discussed data entry. That is all populated here to kind of recap what we've done so the customer and you know it's specifically for this house. We have an image of the house. We'll go over to page two. We have the heating load being generated and we have the breakdown uh, of that pie chart like you saw on the previous screen that shows us all the components of that heating loss and heat load. And therefore, we have a total heat loss of 80,000 BTUs. Uh, and so therefore, we need a furnace that will give us an output of that and the required heating airflow of 1,047 cubic feet of air per minute. On the cooling load, we have the breakdown of the cooling load again in the pie chart as well as the various components for that. Now, in the heating side, we, ha we have just total heat loss. On the cooling side, we have heat gain, and there are two components of heat gain, sensible heat gain and latent heat gain. As you can see, we have the sensible load and the latent load, and these two numbers make up the total load. But because industry protocols mandate that we size to the sensible so that we cover that because it tends to be about 80 to 92% of the load, roughly speaking, and that will vary home by home, that it is the largest portion of the load as you can see. In fact, it calculated out the SHR sensible heat rating of 81% of the load is in this case for the sensible load. And so in this case, we need to make sure that we pick an air conditioning system large enough to cover that because if we don't, on your hottest design day, you're not gonna be able to remove all the heat. As you can see, the humidity, the latent load, is very small and easily managed as long as the air conditioning system runs for about 15 minutes and gets a nice cold wet coil. So we go ahead and in the software in the data entry screen we basically realized that equipment manufacturers sensible capacity ranges typically between 69 percent and 80 percent so we picked a number of 75 percent or 0.75 as our sensible heat rating to be right in the middle give us an average you can obviously pick that based on your manufacturer and the various matchups because every coil and air handler matched up with every outdoor on an air conditioner or a heat pump is going to give you a different sensible capacity. And you get all of that information from your manufacturer's engineering data. We can't provide that for you. We give you a tool to guesstimate what size uh, unit you're going to need. Like I said, picking an average of that sensible heat rating. And so therefore, we take this sensible load right here at 35,749, we divide it by 0.75, and that gives us a required total capacity of 47,665, or four tons of cooling, 
and roughly about 1500 CFM, almost 1600 CFM. And the note right here, the asterisk, references that sensible capacity and why the machine is required to be as large as it has to be. The load on the space didn't change. It's the machine's ability to do the job which required you to go with the larger size piece of equipment. So in many cases, you may find yourself calculating a load just below a certain tonnage, and you may have to jump up to the next half a ton larger in order to cover that sensible load. Again, if you don't, on the hottest days, the equipment may not be able to keep the house comfortable. While you're sizing, in this particular case, for 75 degrees, we may only get to 78 degrees, and then the customer's gonna call you, and you're gonna send a technician out, the technician's gonna diagnose that you installed the system properly and that the system is working fine, it's just not keeping up. And the sun's going to go down, the customer's gonna be happy that night, but then they'll be complaining the next time it reaches above those design temperatures. We have the adequate exposure diversity graph, which basically shows that the average glass load right here on the blue line and the purple glass uh, load on the hourly glass load, if the purple line exceeds the blue line, as it does here in the middle of the day, that that area of the house may experience uh, some temperature changes or uh, temperature swings that can't, where the system can't keep up to keep that space comfortable because the thermostat's probably located somewhere in the middle of the house. So the nice thing for you as a contractor is you have a third-party reference that says that this homeowner might benefit from staged equipment, modulating equipment, variable airflow equipment, zoning equipment, temperature sensing thermostats, and gives you the ability to tell the customer, hey, I've diagnosed your problem as being the amount of glass in that space with the thermostat being in the center of the house. And so while we can't get more ductwork over there, what we can do is we can go ahead and maybe put some controls in or advanced technology equipment that's going to alleviate the comfort problem within that space. So again, it's a nice tool for you to be able to have that. This just is an alert, an alert to you. And then we have a statement about the software validation at the bottom of the report. And there you have the three-page EDS load calculation heat loss, heat gain report. We'll see you in the next module.